Whether you're a longtime Fusion Power user or updating Fusion for the first time, welcome to the What's New in Autodesk Fusion for January. We've been cracking on into this new year to bring you some functional and flash enhancement. This release sees some practical applications for the AI-powered backend engine we've been developing. We're also showcasing a ton of highly requested updates across all workspaces and platform. 2025 is the year to use Fusion to its fully potential, and we want to see you all pushing the limits. Leave a comment on what you're working on, and don't forget to check out our Insider program to get access to the latest enhancements before we release them. We have made significant improvements to enhance your design experience with a Fusion Electronic Workspace. In an early update, we had made significant strides to our design rule checker, making it more adaptable for even the most complex design. One of the standout additions to this new DRC engine and interface is the ability to set both minimum and preferred wire widths and minimum and maximum drill sizes for your PCB. With this update, you can now select your minimum or preferred values directly from the manual route or quick route dialog. No more typing in your preferred value every time you route. You'll find that this single click option speeds up your design process. We have also made it much easier for you to access the Fusion Electronics workspace. You'll now see the electronic design or access the library editor options directly in the workspace switcher menu. So you no longer have to use the pull down menus. If you like, remember that you can always change your preferences with just a few clicks to launch Fusion directly into the electronic workspace. Once you're in the electronic design environment, we've updated the initial page to start a new schematic or access the learning resources quickly. Streamlining these entry points and adding quick access options save time, reduce clicks, and get into the design faster for a more efficient overall experience. The panels in Fusion Electronics make it a lot easier to navigate your design and perform certain tasks such as layer display setup, selection filter or component selection, and much more. For this update, we have improved default tab panels for efficient space utilization, dynamic iconification of panel title bars to accommodate more content, and an intuitive overflow menu. You will now experience smoother drag and drop functionality for tab groups, improved persistence for workspace, layouts across sessions, and much more. Fusion's enhanced electronic panel system delivers a more flexible environment for efficiently managing design tasks. Throughout this coming year, we'll be refreshing the Fusion design samples with new data sets that showcase all the new capabilities we've been adding. These new samples will provide best practices for assembly, configuration, sheet metal, and more. Additionally, you'll now have the ability to copy these samples from the samples folder directly to your own hub, including designs with external components. This overhaul is all about helping you explore and leverage the full potential of Fusion. Starting off the improvements in the design space, specifically, we're unveiling automatically constrained sketches with Autodesk AI. Having a correctly constrained sketch is critical to efficiently design a dynamic part. This incredible innovation automatically identifies and creates sketch constraints and dimensions, either helping you finish off constraining or fully constrain raw sketch geometry. With Auto Constraint, you'll be able to achieve more robust, fully constrained sketches with ease. Whether you're in the middle of sketching or just adding final touches, Auto Constraint can step in and handle the rest. You can manually assign key dimension and constraints first, and then let Auto Constraint do the heavy lifting. It ensures your sketch remains stable by avoiding dimensions or constraints that would cause movement. Plus, once you accept the suggested outcomes, they're fully editable, just like any other sketch geometry 
you create. And don't worry, if you need to undo the changes, Out of Constraint will stay in the undo stack, allowing you to remove constraints and dimensions as needed. There's a new centerline option in the spun profile feature. This enhancement creates a centerline when you project a spun profile. When using the solid revolve tool, profiles with a centerline are automatically selected with the centerline itself being chosen as a revolve axis by default. This means less manual selection for you and smoother, faster design process. With everyone and their neighbor using configuration nowadays, we wanted to make sure to include a couple of major improvements in this release. You can now configure whole features to automate changes in dimensions. This includes options for features such as model threads, offset type, type, size, designation, class, direction, standard, fit, and tip angle. The new configure on the fly we added last release sees an expansion to its supported commands to include shell, pattern as, and all construction geometry commands. If there's specific commands you want added to this feature, drop them in the comments below. Speaking of construction geometry, we've added construction geometry folders to better organize your browser making it easier to find the planes, points, or axis you need. You create new groups by right-clicking on the Construction tab in the Browser tree. Then, drag and drop your construction geometry between these groups. This mirrors the sketch groups we added last year and will help keep your projects tidy. This release fasteners receive auto length and auto update. When placing fasteners from the library, the system now calculates the appropriate length by analyzing the surrounding feature geometry. Feel free to still modify the default clearance value before placing the fastener. Additionally, if bodies with associated fasteners are updated and require a new size, Fusion can automatically make these changes eliminating the need for any manual updates. Fasteners placed using the auto setting will detect geometry changes and indicate the need for an update. The first update of the year brings a dramatically improved drawing sketch environment. With new sketch functions, you can now dimension and constrain sketches made in the drawing environment. This includes all the essential constraints from the design space, allowing for more customized drawings that detail any specifics you're unable to portray through the design itself. We've added the ability to crop your drawing views. For instances, where seeing the entire part is unnecessary. Now, you can shift the focus to specific areas or components without the clutter of the entire assembly. Crop views can be modified like any other view, including adjustments to scale and display style. You can even edit the cropping shape by right-clicking on the crop border and choose between the visible border or a borderless option. Within document settings, we've added an option to detect and omit fasteners using our AI algorithm. This detects the physical fastener geometry, then automatically omits the drawing creation, ensuring that dedicated sheets are not created for these items. You can also add specific keywords to assist in the omission checking process such as washer, bolt, or nut. In the Home tab, you can now apply filters to search results even after they are returned. Previously, filters such as modified date and file type could only be set when navigating through the folder structure. This update allows you to refine your search results, 
making it easier to find exactly what you're looking for. When needing to remove material quickly during turning process and surface finish isn't critical, a new option in Profile Roughing has been added. The Skip Wall Pass option prevents the tool from facing up the back wall on every pass to remove cusp that may be present and can reduce cycle times. With probe geometry, you can measure prismatic features like planes and circle, but traditional probing cycles on CNC controllers only support simple features in standard orientation. Last year, in July, we enhanced this functionality to allow inspection of planes and circles in various orientations. This has been improved further to inspect round prismatic features as whole or partial cylinders, enabling measurements that were previously unattainable with standard probing cycle. Additionally, you can now use asymmetric or unilateral diameter tolerances and apply to orientation to the probe features. Tool orientation allows you to define the axis of a tool in a tool path and is an important control for machines with multi-axis capability. Previously, it has not been possible to reuse a tool orientation from an existing tool path when creating a new one. Similar to geometry selections, you will now be able to reuse an orientation by choosing coordinate system and selecting one from an existing toolpath. This increases your productivity of programming complex parts. The established functionality of geometry selection allows you to choose the suitable geometry for toolpath programming. These can be reused in later toolpaths to expedite the programming process. This functionality is now enhanced for more versatility, increasing the ease of reusing geometry selections by allowing you to reuse them from operations with different tool orientations. All drilling tool paths now support collision avoidance, similar to our milling tool path. This will help avoid shaft and holder collisions during cutting move. In the tool tab, you can now select shaft and holder options with two choices available, fail on collision or skip colliding holes. Linking moves between holes will now automatically be checked for gouge as well. And you can choose how to avoid these in the retraction policy dropdown with the option to avoid collisions or preserve cycles. If desired, the gauge checking can be turned off in the linking tab, which can speed up calculations while adjusting other parameters. In the July release, we added enhancements to the Heights tab of Toolpath to make defining heights more efficient, especially when the model position changes due to tool orientations. Listening to our user feedback, we are reintroducing the single criteria options like stock top and model bottom as system defaults and adding new options for defining heights relative to the fixture top or bottom. We have also made multi-criteria options more flexible, allowing for comparisons between the top of one object and the bottom of another. These changes also apply to the radial heights in rotary milling and turning toolpath. The options have been renamed for clarity. We are always striving to optimize toolpath. An update to one of our calculation kernels has resulted in a significant 15% performance increase for toolpaths such as flat, steep and shallow, blend from the tip of the tool, corner, rotary parallel, and the spun profile used in turning toolpaths. We hope you enjoyed 
the first What's New Infusion for 2025. Leave comment on what you're working on and what you want to see next. And don't forget to check out our Insiders program. Thanks for watching and see you next time.